Welcome back uh, with us this morning to take us through the newspapers, entrepreneur Kate Hardcastle and uh, the rapper Zuby. Good morning, Good morning. to you both. Good morning. Um, let's start off with the um, I front page. Um, Kate, you've had a look at this story and this is the the world of IVF and the, the costs that are involved, etc. That's right, and this is our government watchdog warning that a lot of people who are obviously quite vulnerable and going through the process mm. or trying to apply for IVF, uh, dealing with clinics that have missold them, perhaps their chances, the opportunity of, of how realistic success might be, and sometimes up to additional two and a half thousand pounds in perhaps add-on treatments sometimes unnecessary. And I think it just goes to show that this market in terms of People relying on these clinics, particularly as the NHS is withdrawing from some of the services they offer, um, shows that people are very vulnerable, emotional, and willing to hear the good news, the good possibilities, and perhaps spending money that isn't freely available to them to be able to enable their chances of family. It gives an information about a private patient study. She felt rushed and pressured, frightened and confused. And I've certainly been with friends who've explained to me their own personal situations. I mean, the highs and lows of this alone, without the cost element of it, mm. is pretty spectacular. Um, and I guess this also in a, a situation where you've got people desperate to be parents, but we still have 1% of all children in the UK in care which is another dynamic to think about in all of this too. But it just feels to me that there's not enough clarity. There's, for the consumer, not enough protection here uh, when they're particularly vulnerable. There's also this issue of the postcode lottery, isn't it? You know, depending on where you are, um, that's how many treatments you, you, you may well have. You know, that's very difficult for parents. It, unbelievably, parents. yeah. And I think you, you, when you are vulnerable, you want to hear good news. You want people to lead you through it and tell you through it. And if someone gives you that the answer is just an add-on of another £600, another £500, that's just not going to stand in your way when you're already going through a pretty brave journey as it is. Is there no umbrella body overseeing the, these clinics and governing their, their means of operation? That's the recommendation, exactly. Mm. And that people are more informed. This is an education thing too. I think people sometimes feel they don't have the information available, the information online perhaps isn't as clear as it should be. So we're looking for much more clarity in, in many ways as consumers and to give us protection, but certainly when it comes to health. Subi, you've got a story on the front page of the uh, Daily Mirror, a story that a lot of yeah. the papers are covering. Uh, Philip Schofield um, coming out as gay yesterday. Yeah, sure. So this is... Um, I, I was sort of hesitant to cover this because I don't really like to talk about people's private stuff, but I guess it's become so public now. Yeah. It's on the front cover of all of the newspapers. It's been going online everywhere. So it's like, well, there's not really an option but to talk about it. So in terms of what happens, so of course, uh, Philip Schofield, who is married, I think, for 27 years, yeah. I believe, has two um, grown daughters, both in their 20s, I believe. So he came out, I think it was in an Instagram post that he initially published, announcing that he's, um, I can't remember the exact wording, that he's come to terms with his sexuality and wanted to come out to the public that he's gay. Um, so of course, there, there, are, there are two quite obvious sides to this, I guess. I guess number one is, of course, I'm sure from his side, the relief and having the freedom to be open about that, and he's getting a lot of support in that regard. But then, of course, you've got people who are wondering, OK, well, what about his, his wife, his marriage, his children, everything like that? Um, they made a point that he's, of course, still wearing his wedding ring when he announced it on television. So it's one of those situations, I don't know all, I don't know all the details. I'm not going to try to do any, any mind reading or look into people's private lives or anything like that. I mean, I understand but, your um, sense of feeling uncomfortable about it because it is essentially yeah, a, a it's, private, it's, it's a very, private issue. It's a very private issue, which is, it's odd with it being sort of mm. plastered all, all around for people both nationally and internationally to pontificate on. But really, with stuff like that, I'm 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 in the camp of like, let me mm. let's let them. Yeah. Shows Kate, what are you surprised us, that it's made the it? news though. Kate? Well, it shows what drives mm. the the paper sales, and I guess the concerning thing is there's so many issues that deserve attention. There's 170,000 charities in the UK alone that I'm sure would appreciate some prominence of their stories and particular causes. And I'm sure the Schofields as a family probably want a little bit more privacy too. Mm. So we could get a perfect balance by certainly nodding our head to the way it was handled, which seems to have been supported by his employee, his friends, his family, but perhaps a little more space to things that are more prominent issues for us. Mm. Interesting point. Um, should we move on to the completely different story, the robot barmaids? I see, I love this because... Um, or bar people. Bar people. <laughs> uh, it's uh, Not to be a, sexy. a robot in a bar in Japan who will apparently 
serve you the perfect pint, no spillages, the perfect amount of change back, um, never gives the wrong change, and she is caught catchy, or he's called, QBSE19 slash 020 uh, to zero. So, you know, if you, it's something you can get a good rapport with there. Hi, how are you doing? Hang on, let me just, I've got your name written down somewhere. Let me just grab that. Um, I think the point I want to make out of this is, as someone who champions business all around the world, a lot of businesses sometimes look to technology to try and replace, remove, save costs. And I think we've got to find better bedfellows with technology. I think human and robot together for me, is, that's the excitement. How can we get efficiency so that we can put people back to do the human side? So, you know, if this was the future, as long as someone is there to give the brilliant ear that a bar person can often mm. give, the rapport, the, the banter. In this day and age, that interaction between a barman or a barmaid and the customer doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, it does exist. Do you, it you does? need to come up north? I don't know. You I don't really know. do <laughs> live in a bubble, you folks. I don't go to bars enough. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's not why I heard you. It's always noisier, though. And you go in there, you can't hear yourself barely. Again, what bars are you going to? You need, maybe you're getting a bit <laughs> older, you know, you need to think about the type of Never. place you're frequenting. But I think seriously, we've got to stop thinking about either or here. We've got to, what's the perfect blend and bring out humans to humans. We want human to human interaction. Uh, Zuby, you've got a story yes. about a Gavin Williamson and he's talking about uh, free speech. What's he, uh, yeah, what's sure. he been saying? So this is um, the Education Secretary, Gavin Williamson. He put out a statement um, Essentially, a bit, a bit of a warning towards universities. So these, this is raising concerns around no platforming speakers and groups. There, both in the UK and in the US, there's been over the last five or six years, there's been an increase in what people call no platforming. So essentially, if there's a speaker who some people don't like the views of, or who some people may think is a bit controversial, you're getting them essentially barring these speakers, and this is raising a lot of free speech concerns around university. I think it's important for people to remember university is where people should be able to debate ideas and have ideas challenged, listen to speakers from a range of different views, whether or not they agree or disagree with them. And so there's been a rising concern of this idea of just not allowing people who have been booked to speak mm -hmm. to speak um, because it prevents the free exchange of ideas. And it's very, it's very authoritarian mm -hmm. and totalitarian. Um, and yet with the rise and rise of social media, people have got a better and bigger platform than ever. For yeah, absolutely. Making the comments they want to make. Yeah, sure, and they should. You know, if pe the best way to combat what people may think are bad opinions or bad speech is with good opinions and good speech. I'm not. I'm very, very. I'm like a free speech absolutist, essentially. Mm. So I think it's important that universities maintain that. Um, there's also been a response, which is interesting. So from. Uh, the Vice Chancellor's Group, Universities UK, they said that there's little evidence that there's a system, systematic problem regarding protecting free speech. And that seems like either they're being a bit dishonest or a bit naive. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly something we've been talking about yeah. a, a, an awful lot, isn't it, over the, the last few months. Um, just got time very quickly for the, the bunnies. The bunny story in the Telegraph. Well, we're going to be a, get a huge, cute picture of bunnies, hopefully. At this <laughs> oh, point. there it is. <laughs> um, so, who knew, but bunnies don't like to be by themselves. So this is some advice from uh, the Veterinary Association that if you're going to think about homing a rabbit, think about homing them in pairs, but you've got to get pairs that work well together. Yes. You know, there's a bit of a personality them, conflict on here. It's like the Big Brother house of <laughs> rabbit world. And actually, they don't live with guinea pigs very well. Oh, there cool. we go. Fact Who knew? Day. Bunnies but, like yeah, company. Look after your bunnies. We're going to we're gonna send you two bunnies off to read some more papers. <laughs> Thanks. <Okay. laughs> Much more coming up after the break. Please stay.